All right, so we said if you think recursively, you can solve many problems using recursion. So our recursive method have the following characteristic, okay? The method is implementing using if else. There's no loop, right? Using if else. Or you can use switch statements. That can lead to two different cases. You have to have at least one base case. You can have more. Every recursive call reduces the original problem, right? That's to reduce every time. Bring it closer to the base case. So to solve a problem using recursion, you break it into sub-programs. So that's why we have the methods, right? So each sub-problem is the same as the original problem, but smaller in size, right? That's why we call it self, like, we said, it is fun to think recursive, okay? Like, consider drinking coffee, you may think recursively. Describe the position recursively as follows. Drink coffee. If the cup is not empty, so you're going to do take one sip. That means you call drink coffee again. So it's keep recursively called self. Right? Until it's empty. Then it just finish, right? Because you keep taking one sip. Consider problem printing a message in times. Right, so when you talk about print message in time, it's just like I can pretty much just do this. Right? Loop, right? But you can do recursive too, right? So, the message to print pass in the method in print. And then we have times, how much, how many times you want to print? So, as long as, like for example, I want to print three times, three is greater than equals to one, then we print the message. And we just call the smaller version of itself by reducing it to two, right? Three minus one. And then it's going to print the message until two greater than equals to one. It's going to print, reduce to one, print with zero. We just reach the best case. Then recursive is done. So that's another way to print, think, think recursively. So let's look at this. You can use recursion to solve many of the problems. So consider like problem of polyndrome. So we know what's polyndrome, right? When you read the word from front to back and back to front, it's going to give you the same word, right? Like race car, right? That's probably in drone. So we said, okay, we're going to use recursive to help solve this problem to write an application to file in drone. So the problem of checking whether a string is a prime drone can be divided into two sub problems. Check whether the first character and the last character of the string are equal. Ignore the two end characters and check whether the rest of the substring is a polyndrome. Okay, so let's look at the program, right? So we said there are two best cases. First best case is the two end characters are not the same. The second one, the string size is 0 or 1. Okay. So in the case one for base case, the string is not a polyndrome because they are not the same. Then done. We don't have to validate anymore, right? And two, the string is a polyndrome because we keep evaluating until the size is zero or one, right? Because it can be odd number of characters or even numbers of characters. Where it's even, it's just zero. Where it's odd, it's just one, right? 
So when we write this, we said, okay, this is the method called is in the arm, we return true or false. We pass the string to test. Now we get the length of the string. If it's less than, less than equals to one, that's the best case, return true, right? Because this is polyndrome. Because we pass in smaller version of itself every time. Else, if we compare the first characters, right, to the last, if the first and last not equal, it's not a palindrome, it's returned false right away, right? Like if you look at example, mom, m, first and last, it has to be the same. If it fall into this case, it's no longer a palindrome, right? So return false. Another one is the recursive, right? Recursively call. This is where we call small version of itself is palindrome and do substring. Right, S dot substring. Starting from index one, like we test substring is index one is O, we passing O in, and the length minus one pretty much just passing itself like just letter O because this is small, right? Then when it get to size is one, then return two. Mom is the parent dog, right? And this is testing with the application, like use noon, right? This is probably drawn to ABA, right? And so on. So recursive pivot method is sometimes you can find a solution to the original problem by defining a recursive function to a problem similar to the original problem. So this new method is called a recursive helper method. The original problem can be solved by invoking the recursive helper method. So we look at the recursive polyndrome.java again. We may see that the one that we've seen before there's no helper method, right? It's just this polyndrome here, right? Uh, here, it's polyndrome. And pass in string, right? Now it says not efficient, right? It create a new string for every recursive call. So to avoid creating new strings, you can use the low and high indices to indicate the range of the substring. Right. These two indices must be passed to the recursive method. Original one is polyndrome string s. You have to create the new method is polyndrome string s with a range lower bound and upper bound. So we're going to mod modify this to make it more efficient by not having to generate new string every time. So is point down take the string and it's going to call the helper, right? Recursive helper methods. Name is polyndom again with pretty much as overloaded, right? With different parameters with an index. So first, it's starting from 0 to the length of the index, minus 1, the whole word. And then, first let's just check. If high is later, less than or equals to low, that means you already reach the best case, right? Either in the middle, right? If it's odd, uh, it's going to be negative when it's even, right? size of the words. So return to this is the prime dorm. Else pretty much just compare the first characters to the last, right? 
low to high. Once it's not matching, then it's false. Right. So it's no longer polydrome. And this is recursively cast just by right, adding the beginning index and subtracting the last index every time to the smaller cases. So this is called using the helper method is make it more efficient. Okay, so this is just using an application. Now let's look at another example. We know that when we are dealing with lists, we need to sort the list. So there are many techniques to sort. One of the techniques we call selection sort. So what's selection sort? So let's talk about selection sort first. There are many ways to sort. One is selection sort. How to sort this list? You have two papers. One is all the name on this one paper. And you have an, a blank paper where you start to look through the list. And you try to find the smallest one. This is alphabetic, alphabetically ordered. And we said Hemming is the smallest. H. So let's go first. You write down. So we select and put in the new list with a blank paper here. And we go down the list again. After we write down, we close it out. Now this is the second one that's smaller, right? McCarthy. And we keep doing that cross. This is called selection sort. Right? We keep selecting from the list to a new list. And it's sorted. So how we, how could we use recursive to help us for selection sort? Okay. So we said find the smallest element right in the list and swap it with the first element. If then find the smallest element remaining and swap it right with the first element in the remaining list and so on until the remaining list contains only a single element. So we said problem can divide into two sub programs. So find the smallest element in the list and swap it with the first element. So that's the first way. And then, second, ignore the first element and sort the remaining smaller list recursively. Because I always find it and replace the first every time. And never thought about it, it's always the first, right? So that's how we're going to deal with. And we said, the best case is that the list contains only one element. Because when it's done, then we've done the sort. Now we identify the best case, right? So let's look at this sort. You pass in the list. And this one we use the helpers, right? Because the helper methods right there sort by passing index to help to make it more efficient, right? So we have the list, pass the same list there, and starting with index 0 and the last one, right? Length minus 1, last index. So we start to pass into the sort that taking low and high. And we said if low less than high, find the smallest number and its index. So that's the best case here, right? Find the smallest number, right? And its index in the list. So now we identify that low is going to be an index of min. So we say this is the min index. And then we're going to get the values of the low out as the min. Assume this is the min. Now we're going to say, okay, right, find the smallest elements in the list. We found it and swap it with the first element. So we're going to need to find loop through, right, the list. If the list actually we're going to compare, right? Because we don't know if it's actually min or not. We try to find by loop through the list. If it's min, then it will never get to this because it never could be greater than the next one. Otherwise, we're going to find a new min, a new index. 
So this is fine. And then we swap right here. Price swap 